This is problem 13, 3. Three 5 kilogram masses are located at points in XY plane as shown. What is the magnitude of the resultant force caused by the other two masses on the mass at x equals 0, y equal 0.3 meters? Alright, so we are going to focus in on mass number 1 right here. And we know that there will be a force of attraction, let's call it F1, towards mass number 2. And there will be a force of attraction, let's call it F2, towards mass number 3. These forces will be equal and opposite between the two masses involved. And what we're going to do is look at each force separately and then add them together according to superposition. So let's find the magnitude of F1 first by Newton's law of gravity. That's going to be G mass 1 mass 2 over the distance between them squared. And that's going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5 kilograms times 5 kilograms and the distance between them is 0.3 meters squared and if we calculate that we get 1.85 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons directed totally down like this so if I wrote this as a vector it would be equal to a negative 1.85 times 10 to the minus 8 j newtons so that's vector force F1 now let's get the magnitude of F2 that is g mass 1 mass 3 or the distance between them squared 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5 kilograms times 5 kilograms over what's the distance well if we look at this triangle we have a 0 0.3 0 0.4 and then by a 3 4 5 triangle this would be 0 0.5 meters we could use the Pythagorean theorem to determine that as well so we are indeed 0 0.5 meters away and we're going to square that so this is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons. And it's going down at an angle like this. So we need to break it up into components to get those um, I and J components. Now if I look at this, if I were to extend a line along the x-axis this way, there will be a angle, let's call it theta right here, and hence, if I were to write F2 in terms of a vector, I would say that F2 is equal to, as a vector, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 cosine theta i minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9 sine theta j. But what is cosine theta and sine theta or, or theta itself? Well, this theta here should be the same as that theta up there because the internal angles are equal for two parallel lines. And if I look at this theta down here in the corner of this triangle, it's part of a, indeed, a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the cosine is going to be 4 fifths, 4 divided by 5, and the sine will be 3 fifths. 3 divided by 5. So if I use those values, since we have the same angle, we have 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9. Cosine theta is 4 fifths i minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 9. Sine theta is 3 fifths. J. So what are those values? I get 5.336 times 10 to the minus 9 I minus 4.00 times 10 to the minus 9 J newtons. That is our vector force F2. 
what we want is the combination of these two vectors. So f as a vector, our total f is equal to f1 plus f2. Let me rewrite that uh, first vector there. All right, so f is equal to f1 plus f2. So we have and that is equal to 5.34 times 10 to the minus 9i minus 4 times 10 to the minus 9 and minus 1.85 times 10 to the minus 9j. This is also a j. So this is going to be 5.34 10 minus 8j. 5.34 times 10 minus 9i minus 2.25 times 10 to the minus 8j. That is our net force in ijk form. If we continue this, we have that we want to find the magnitude of this force. So we square the components, add them together, um, all this times 10 to the minus 9, and we get what? 23.1 times 10 to the minus 9 newtons, or I could write this as 2.31 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons, is the magnitude of the net force on mass number 1. 2.31 times 10 to the minus 8 newtons. Answer.